When one thinks of the most powerful Pontiacs in history, a number of vehicles come to mind. Late 60s era GTOs with Ram Air 4 engines. 1973 and 74 Firebirds with the Super Duty 455. Even the late 2000s Pontiac G8 GXPs with the 415 horsepower V8. However, despite the lofty horsepower ratings on these Pontiacs, the highest advertised horsepower rating of any Pontiac, and admittedly that is different from the highest real-world horsepower rating, which probably does go to those Ram Air 4 GTOs and Super Duty Firebirds, instead goes to Canadian Pontiacs from 1966 with the 425 horsepower Chevrolet-based 427 cubic inch V8. Now, some viewers of the channel may not realize that Pontiacs sold in Canada, and as well as some that were sold overseas, were materially different from those that were sold in the U.S. More specifically, these Pontiacs carried Chevrolet engines under hood, and they also were outfitted with Chevrolet transmissions in a number of instances, including power glides. Moreover, while Pontiac had introduced the wide track in the U.S. in 1959, Canadian Pontiacs had Chevrolet chassis underneath their Pontiac bodies, making them what I call narrow-track Pontiacs because the Chevrolet chassis they employed were not wide tracks. There were also differences in interior fabrics and materials, as well as naming of the vehicles in the lineup. In 1966, in particular, the Pontiac lineup consisted of the Grand Parisian, the Parisian, the Laurentian, and the Strato Chief from a sedan perspective. None of those Pontiac nameplates at this time were known in the U.S. or even sold in the U.S., although later in the 1980s, Pontiac did end up importing the Parisian from Canada to the U.S., which was effectively a rebadged Chevrolet Caprice because Pontiac had dropped its full-size rear-wheel drive car from the lineup in the early 1980s and honestly regretted this decision and started importing the Parisian from Canada to fill a gap in its lineup when dealers started clamoring for more full-size vehicles. One might then ask why in the world would Pontiac be so different in Canada than in the U.S.? Well, a couple reasons. One is that at the time there were import duties and laws that made it cost prohibitive to import Pontiacs from the U.S. to Canada and sell them profitably. So vehicles had to be produced locally with locally made components at high levels of scale. Thus, GM of Canada devised that Pontiacs in Canada would be different and employ Chevrolet components, and Chevrolets and Pontiacs would be able to share the scale associated with producing vehicles with the same components within the country. It also made it considerably easier for these vehicles to be produced on the same assembly line if needed. By 1966, Pontiacs in Canada were super sellers. And in fact, Pontiac was the mainstream brand for General Motors in Canada, not Chevrolet as it was in the United States. And in the Pontiac lineup for 1966, in Canada were a series of Chevrolet engines. At the base of the lineup was the all-new Astro 6, 250 cubic inch six-cylinder that made 155 horsepower. One up from that was Pontiac's so-called Strato Flash V8 that displaced 283 cubic inches and made 195 horsepower with a two-barrel carburetor. One up from the Strato Flash 283 was the Astro Flame 327, which made 275 horsepower. Again, one up from the Astro Flame 327 was the Astro Jet 396 Chevrolet Big Block V8 that made 325 horsepower. And the range-topping Pontiac V8 for 1966 in Canada was the so-called Jet Flame 427 cubic inch V8 that came in two versions, the first making 390 horsepower and the second making 425 horsepower. So the name was humorously different versus the 427 cubic inch, 425 horsepower turbojet V8s in the United States. The Canadian Jet Flame 427 V8 was effectively the same engine as what was employed by Chevrolet for sale 
just over the border. This particular 427 cubic inch V8 had a number of special features allowing it to make 425 horsepower, including mechanical valve lifters, a special camshaft, as well as crankshaft, double belt water pumps and fan drives, and a large four barrel carburetor. It also had an 11 to 1 compression ratio. Interestingly, while in 1966, the top dog engine in Canadian Pontiacs was this 425 horsepower jet flame V8, in 1967, the top of the line engine was tamed quite significantly, down from 425 horsepower to just 385 horsepower. And now the top of the line engine had a lower 10.25 to one compression ratio and no longer had mechanical valve lifters. Oh well. This makes the 1966 Canadian Pontiac Jet Flame V8 the highest horsepower Pontiac in history, at least in terms of advertised horsepower, as I previously mentioned, even topping the likes of the Ram Air 4, Super Duty, and Pontiac G8 GXP engines from a rated horsepower perspective. The astute viewer may indeed point out that horsepower ratings in 1966 were done on an SAE gross basis versus a net basis in the 1972 and later model years, with the net horsepower ratings, including accessories that were attached to the engine, like the alternator, as well as exhaust system and air cleaner for the overall rating, making them lower than gross horsepower ratings. However, the point still remains that the 425 horsepower Jet Flame V8 outfitted under the hood of 1966 Canadian Pontiacs remains the highest advertised horsepower Pontiac V8 in history. And it certainly is a super rare option. In fact, I have never seen one, whether for sale or not for sale, in person or even heard of one. I suspect the production numbers for Pontiacs with this engine in Canada were somewhere in the zip code of 10 to 20 units for the entire 1966 model year. Given their rarity as well as beauty, they certainly are collectibles, albeit very unknown in the United States, and that's rather unfortunate. I think one of the great things about the 1966 Canadian Grand Parisienne is that you were able to effectively get a 1965 Grand Prix rear end on a four-door hardtop, something that you couldn't get in the U.S., in any case, hope you enjoyed this brief feature on the most powerful Pontiac in history. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you. Till next time, thanks again for watching, and take care.